Well, welcome everyone uh, to our November meetup. Um, we uh, just a few announcements and then then we'll go to the presentation. So just want to announce to the to the group here and we, we just we are planning our Salt Lake City DevOps days in March of next year. I, I put uh, some of the links there in the page for Salt Lake City DevOps days website still being built. Uh, we're not taking orders yet, but you can get some information there. Also, if anyone's interested in um, presenting at the conference, we do have a call for papers. Uh, there's a link there uh, I put there in the chat and you can submit uh, your, your presentation proposal. And our plan is, uh, the deadline for that is uh, January. Uh, I think it's like January 3rd or something like that. So it's still time to submit. But anyway, just welcome everyone to the presentation. Uh, we probably won't have a meeting in December because of the holidays, but we will try to have some meetings in January. And like I always try to do, if anyone's interested in presenting, has uh, has some tools they want to share or process they want to share with the group, you can always contact me through Meetup and we can put a proposal together and plan a schedule. It's a great way to, to kind of get yourself out there, uh, present the group, you help the community, and we all learn together. So that's that's what's good with that. So Krishna, with that, let's let's turn the time over to, to Krishna, who's gonna talk about uh, Terraform and Bicep, which is, I try to tell a lot of people that go into DevOps, it's one of the most important tools to learn. Uh, to actually implement uh, infrastructure in the cloud. So we'll turn the time over to you, Krishna. Yeah. Uh, hey, hi, Al. Uh, this is Krishna. Uh, just give me So I've been working as like DevOps engineers for almost like 10 years. Uh, I've been working in many, uh, like I did work in a lot of sectors where uh, I try to provision and maintain infrastructure and help uh, help teams and uh, even the companies to migrate from on-prem to cloud so that's uh, that's what my major expertise in so i did worked in insurance sector i did worked in sales sector i did worked in uh, uh, marketing and right now i'm working in uh, education like I, right now I'm working for uh, utah state board of education so i'm trying to help uh, them migrate uh, their on-prem to uh, right now we are using bicep so we are helping them to upgrade everything to bicep so i just uh, so before i start explaining anything about uh, what what is infrastructure as code or like why do we need terraform uh, i just want to know like how how it is like how so what are you what are your expectations from this i mean uh, do you guys so have idea about like actually here. Uh, sorry uh, do you guys have an idea like how or like what, what was your expression for this uh, presentation so that I can go a bit, bit deeper and explain from the scratch? Uh, is someone like, uh, so are you guys into uh, system admins or are you developers? Like what, what are your... And everyone, you can, you can either put your questions in the chat if you don't, yeah, if you feel don't... comfortable talking, and then I can, Tiffany and I can kind of fill the questions. I'll go. Um, I'm a cloud engineer doing a refresh on infrastructure as code. Um, I was about to move into it a week ago, or at least try to. Um, and I got moved to a different team. So just doing a refresher. Oh. I'm working on some stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah, I see like newbie. Ah, oh, okay. I mean, uh, I can start from whatever uh, I have in terms of I, I can provide to you, uh, so that you guys can help. It will help in your organization. Uh, so let me start with the presentation. So why why do we why do we like why why does the concept uh, infrastructure score came into place? Uh, because uh, Previously, uh, if they if you want to do provision anything, so before coming uh, infrastructure as core, like the, before everyone used to manually provision the core, manually go to the portal, Azure portal or uh, AWS or 
Google Cloud doesn't matter. So they try to go to manual and use GUI to use GUI to do all the operations. But uh, uh, so it's going to be heckle uh, like once you start doing it and once you have like many resources, more, more, more and more resources keep on, keep on adding it. And because of that reason, I mean, it's hard to maintain uh, everything because like someone did some mistake and we, we could not figure out like, what's going on. So at that time, they, they start up using, okay, let's start uh, writing everything in fact in the code so that uh, it will be helpful. So we can see like what's going on and we can version the code. Uh, so th that's the process like they started using, uh, uh, like there are like some tools, uh, even ter in Terraform or uh, uh, Bicep. And there are like some other tools in the market too, but these are the major, major tools which uh, try to uh, do uh, right everything in the infrastructure. Uh, let me let me start giving like some small demo. And the public cloud world, the public cloud world has led to an expression of a cloud-based uh, infrastructure and leading to provide uh, in, because like if you have like a lot of environments, uh, we need like a lot of tools. Uh, of doing all of these tools, like it's hard for us to uh, what do you say? It's it's for, uh, hard for us to like do automation work uh, with those uh, uh, do whatever we are trying to do in the GUI operations. So I'll go from the scratch. Uh, hey, Krishna, are you trying to share your screen? Because I'm not yeah, yeah. seeing your screen. Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought I'm sharing the screen. My bad. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, it's just coming up now. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, so, so let let me give you like some basic introduction, like what is Terraform. Uh, in the, in this presentation, like I'll try to explain like what is Terraform and what is Bicep and what are the difference between these two tools. And I will give you like short uh, understanding, like how uh, like core structure will be in Terraform and like what what are the steps you need to start with the Terraform and what are the steps you need to follow to start working on uh, Bicep. Uh, I'll try to complete, uh, I mean, uh, if I go fast, let, let me know. Uh, sometimes I usually go walk faster. So just let me know, like if you feel any, any questions, you can put in the chat, I can go slower. So, so as I said, like uh, uh, Terraform is an open source tool uh, which uses like declarative language. So declarative language is something where uh, each and every component, uh, we try to write everything in the code actually, and we just go like line by line so that we understand like even uh, if you don't have any experience with the coding, uh, if you if you see that code, you still don't understand like well, you don't need to uh, worry about like syntax errors or you don't worry about uh, uh, it's easy to understand and it, it's easy in a declarative way so that you don't need to worry about like what's going on with each and every stuff. And coming to Terraform, like why why we need to use Terraform? I mean, so as I said before, like Terraform, uh, we we use Terraform. So there are like outside tools like uh, Ansible, Chef, Puppet, too, or uh, uh, DevOps tools. But why we why we are using uh, Terraform or Bicep? Because like these are the tools which we use to uh, provision provision any resource in Azure, any cloud environment, doesn't matter if it's in Azure or AWS. But if if it is Azure, uh, so we prefer you try to use Bicep, but if you're Terraform, uh, Terraform, Terraform has brought us for both Azure, AWS, and Google too, even they have with OpenShift too. So, but uh, if it compares to Bicep, Bicep is only for Microsoft. It's only exclusive for Microsoft. So coming, coming to the Terraform, uh, so with this Terraform, we can uh, uh, version the code, we, we can do code reviews, and we can do continuous deployment uh, uh, with the second safe mode. And it is super fast. Like you can, uh, once once you start using Terraform, you will understand like how fast it is, like rather than provisioning uh, using uh, like cloud formation templates or ARM templates, uh, if it is a cloud formation template in uh, AWS or, or uh, ARM templates in Azure. So you will see a lot of difference uh, when you try to use Terraform because it's super fast. And, and Terraform has like a lot bigger community because like uh, everyone started using Terraform instead of using a cloud formation template or uh, Bicep because uh, it has because a lot of people try to use. And if you have any questions, you can directly get answers online. You don't need to, uh, it, 
uh, you don't need to worry about like if if you are stuck with something and you don't know like you don't need to reach out to Terraform organization to get the details. So uh, that's the reason the Terraform came into picture and it's uh, basically ruling the market for enforcing stuff. And coming to the benefits of Terraform, so it uses like DevOps, DevOps methodology. Uh, as I said, like it is, we can use continuous integration and deployment from there, mm -hmm. and we can use uh, a versioning. So it, it's more of like it fits into DevOps methodology and it's simple to use. And I, as I said, like before, cloud agnostic because like, it works with the multiple clouds, uh, either with the uh, Azure or uh, AWS or and Google doesn't matter because they have uh, resources for everywhere. And they follow module modules of stuff. Uh, mod in the module in the coding, they try to use like modules, and then they call the major file. I'll show you in a couple of minutes. Uh, I'll, I'll show you like why what they what what the modules they mean, and it it completely relies on uh, state file. Uh, so state file is something. Uh, so whenever when you try to create any Terraform files, so it will store uh, a state file in a certain location, so that whenever you try to make any changes, so Terraform first looks at the state file, and then from that state file, uh, like if you are making any changes, uh, based on that state file, uh, it will try to update or it won't. So let's say you are trying to add any resource, uh, you are trying to create a new virtual machine, and you want to add new storage, and so first time it will get a state file and it will store in some place. And if you want to delete any thing uh, be behind the any of the uh, storage, so it won't do it because uh, the state file is already created. So so you need to satisfy the state file before making any changes. So I I'll show you like how file works and be how remote state file we usually maintain uh, before uh, trying to make any changes. So this will help uh, actually the state file will help try uh, like if someone tries to delete anything uh, it won't delete because we have a state file secure and we can keep the versioning of the state file so that if something happens uh, with certain things uh, we can go with one step back and you can use the state file and try to provision all the resources and we can have like multiple workspaces for local developers so they can they can start working on it so multiple people can work on workspace uh, but all of them rely on the state file so uh, even the processes, uh, if you go to, uh, they have a lot of uh, modules for each and every company in uh, Azure or AWS or Google. Uh, they have every module. Uh, sometimes it may take some time, but if it is uh, Azure, it may take like two to three months when they make generally available for any new resource. But if you go with the Amazon or Google, they try to catch up within like less than a month. A month, so they usually work uh, proactively and get the modules ready. <laughs> uh, so coming to infrastructure as a code uh, for Terraform, like Terraform uses uh, different concepts called uh, variables, providers, modules, states, resources, data source, output values, plan, and apply. Oh, okay. So, so similarly, like, uh, other coding patterns, like it, it is the same thing with, like variables and the providers are something which uh, they try to, uh, so we don't need to write anything uh, in our code. Like we just need to call that provider and uh, the provider will talk to API. Once we authenticate our uh, Terraform, uh, once we need to authenticate our Terraform, we need to install uh, our Terraform on local and we just authenticate your uh, credentials with Terraform uh, with our, any of your cloud. Then once, uh, and you need to set up, uh, there, there's like small process to, Start up. Uh, start how to start uh, your. Uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you guys like uh, some links on like how how you gonna set up basic from your local to your Azure or AWS uh, resource like how you gonna connect and set up uh, everything. So once you set up, then uh, where you try to write, it will try to connect using uh, APIs. Uh, so you don't need to worry about like asking what happens. You just need to know. So let's say you want to create a virtual mission or you want to create a Cosmos GP or you want to create any resource, uh, you, you just Google, uh, there, there is like Terraform uh, uh, repository. So where you can get each and every module, just try to copy that snippet and keep it in your uh, uh, code and just try to run it. Uh, I'll show you some detailed way, like how uh, how the providers are, like how modules, uh, 
how 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 do you need to maintain the modules and if you come into state uh, as a state like we maintain a uh, state file in one of the remote uh, where we when someone tries to make any changes uh, it will try to look for the state file and if there is a extra changes apart from the what state has so it will try to make it if not it won't make any changes uh, so so resources are something which we try to call so let's say here is the company so like virtual networks so if you want to create a virtual network you just use the resource and then uh, and you need to pass the variables to that so that if you can start using it, it will automatically connect there. Uh, I will try to show you. Uh, uh, I'll give you like once this uh, demo is done, like I'll try to show you how th this uh, maybe this might be tough to read or understand, but uh, once you start using it, uh, it's like super easy to learn. Uh, I'll, I'll give you like small demo on that part. And coming to bicep, uh, bicep is. Uh, so Microsoft tried tried almost uh, replicating like what Terraform did. Terraform did. So because in Microsoft we use uh, Azure ARM templates, ARM, ARM, ARM templates to provision any of the resources. Uh, but coming to so ARM templates is like JSON templates, and it's hard to understand, and we need to maintain syntax everywhere. So it took a lot of. Uh, like if some if there's an issue with any of the ARM templates, it took a lot of time to figure it out. And those are like not, uh, uh, I mean, like uh, if you want to provision any virtual machine, you need to write minimum of like 200 lines of code with the J JSON ARM templates. And we need to uh, provide all the variables uh, and declare all the variables. And if you miss any of the parameters, it's hard for them. So Microsoft came up with the idea called Bicep, which is similar to like what we have for uh, Terraform. Same Similar way, we try to, uh, cre create the resources. Uh, like if you if you are using JSON, it's like 200 lines. And if you are using Bicep, it will be like five to six lines. You just need to know what resource you want to use. Uh, so Bicep, uh, if you're using Visual Studio Code, you like you just, uh, if it is an extension, like you just get the resources, whatever you want. I'm uh, oh, sorry. So, uh, it's almost similar like what we are using Terraform. I mean, uh, I, I have started using Bicep for uh, recent days, but before I used to use Terraform more. But uh, once I started using Bicep, I, I realized that it will be like same uh, how we are using Terraform. Similarly, they have like same module structure. Similarly, they have same resources type. Uh, but uh, here we don't have a concept called a state file. So, so we directly, because it's an Azure resource, so we don't need to maintain any state file. Bicep doesn't store any state file. Like, so what are you trying to do? So it so all the state file will be taken care by the Microsoft. We don't need to worry about like how state file we maintain or what are the securities for the state file. So that's the advantage with Bicep. And Bicep, uh, so Bicep has a facility where whatever the things you provision with ARM templates, the, there is a command which will convert uh, uh, ARM templates to uh bicep templates so so the so that like if you are having anything which already uh provision using arm templates and you want to use the bicep so it, there is some commands to which you can run and create uh bicep or templates instead of using arm templates uh uh let me give you some demo on this part too uh even so once you start using bicep uh it, it's like pretty much easily we, we just maintain the modules we keep all of our code in the modules and we just call the main file similarly how we call in terraform uh, see even this as like whatever the whenever any resource which is generally available in microsoft uh in Azure, so it will be part of the bicep code bicep resource will be available at that time so they are not uh they, this is not like terraform it won't really need to wait for like two to three months to get the uh, that particular resource uh, in Bicep code, but Bicep, whenever Microsoft releases any new product, so they try to give the Bicep uh, snippet too. And I try to compare compare like uh, Bicep with the Terraform so that uh, people can understand like why, which one they can use for their uh, purposes, like what companies need, do to it, like if they want to go with the Bicep or if they want to go with the Terraform. So, in the present organization where I'm working, so they have a requirement. Uh, so everyone uh, started using, I mean, like they, they thought of using Bicep as they are using Microsoft. So uh, I thought of giving them like, why why won't we use Terraform instead of Bicep? Because uh, Bicep 
we they started now, so we have less community to people are using. Uh, but Terraform is like everyone started using, and uh, we have a lot of resources. And it's easy to use. Uh, I thought I came up with some of the things like why bicep is uh, and like why why we need to use Terraform instead of bicep. Uh, so that's the reason I created some of the template. I compared uh, bicep Terraform with these three tabs. Like one is deployment methods, and one is uh, language syntax, and the one is tooling. Uh, these three metrics like I tried to compare, and uh, let me use like both of these things. So in deployment, uh, so in bicep is like incremental method uh, where uh, uh, like if you are making, let's say X changes today. So tomorrow you can make, you can mod modify or add some more changes uh, tomorrow. I mean, you, you don't need to worry about any state file, but in Terraform, Terraform tries to keep whatever the code uh, snippet. Uh, I mean, let's say you are, uh, you are, Thing today and if you want to make any changes or update any changes so it has to satisfy the state file so before making any changes so so that part is one thing i mean it's it it depends on your uh, requirement like if you want to keep it more secure or if you want to because like in bicep it, it it's easy to delete it's not uh, that easy to delete in uh terra so because uh the underlying infrastructure is different for what we use for the Terraform and what we use the bicep. Uh, but it's all it's all depends on like what exactly your uh, institution needs and what, how you want to maintain your infrastructure. Uh, ra rather than so you want to delete like a, a, as many ones you want or you want to keep like more security for deleting. So at that time, uh, Terraform helps doing uh, uh, deleting any resources compared to uh, bicep and. Uh, yeah, to delete version Yeah, as I said, like uh, in Terraform, we have a uh, we, we use like state file, which is like critical, we, uh, which is critical. And if if somehow like state file got deleted, or if somehow uh, I mean you, you need to because since use all the passwords and everything uh, so I, you either keep the all those passwords in key vault and then uh, connect to your state file over there or so a lot of companies before before key vault like they, they try to keep all their passwords and everything in uh, uh, state file but later um, as everything everything's evolving so they, they start keeping all of their passwords in key vault and connecting the state file to there uh, but still uh, if you have state file, uh, the problem with that, uh, so if you have state file, like something happens with uh, any storage, like we usually keep the state file in remote places where if you want to delete any of the state file, I somehow it got deleted, so you're going to lose infrastructure. So so that might be the concern, but usually Microsoft or any cloud provider provide uh, where we are storing the remote uh, state files. So they usually provide like 99.99% SLA, but still if some 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 reason we are missing uh, the state file. So we might need to come up with some other solution like keeping our state file in multiple zones uh, so that if we are having an issue with one of the uh, storage areas, we can get those. But uh, it's all depend on like how big is infrastructure and how we want to do it. And Yeah, Com coming to la language syntax, uh, they are, uh, uh, I, I try to go with like three of these parts, like custom validations and resource version pinning and conditional deployments. So uh, coming to custom validations, like in uh, BICEP, we try to use like different, we try to use different, uh, uh, like if you guys are familiar with the PowerShell, it's uh, similar to like how you use like PowerShell workflow, where we try to declare uh, parameters before and then we call the script and we use those parameters in our script so similar way in bicep they use the same concept uh, where we declare all the parameters before and then we try to call in the beneath the script and we're coming to terraform terraform is some somewhat different like we use uh, terraform.tf parts uh, like we keep all of our variables in set and file and we keep our main, uh, main. so wherever you're trying to call we keep those in different main dot file main dot tf file and you, what are the modules you are keeping? We are just keeping the different folder. So we try to keep those uh, uh, file structure in different ways. 
so both of them purpose uh, both of them have a similar purpose but uh, their structure is different and coming to resource version pinning i mean it's both i mean if you keep your bicep core or terraform code in uh, uh, your your source control so you can have uh, uh, you, you can have like when when someone changes it's similar to like how we how we develop the code so we we can have like multiple branches and we can uh, we, if you want to let's say like if you want to go to previous uh, thing let's say if something changes we made and that broke the infrastructure we can go with the previous uh, check-in and then we, we push the changes and that's how we get, we get our infrastructure back so we don't need to worry about it so it has like same say it has like same feature for both uh, bicep and terraform and we can have multiple uh, uh, i mean like you can have like as many conditions as you want uh, based on your requirement so it supports both uh, uh, bicep and uh, terraform supports both conditional deployments too i mean let's say you want to you, you want to create uh, uh, you want to create an like, auto scaling or like you want to create like new virtual machine based on some requirement. Uh, let's say you want uh, based on your CPU performance, we try to increase the um, we try to increase the VMs or uh, anyway. So at that time, uh, we usually enable auto scaling for both of them, and it will try to create it. So similar way in uh, Terraform also, like if you want to do any conditional uh, in Terraform bicep, like if you want to do any conditional positionings, like you can do it too. I mean, it will support both of them. Uh, and coming to the Terraform, like these are the basic commands you need to know uh, before starting anything. Uh, so before you start anything, you need to have I initialize the part called Terraform INIT. Uh, so it will initialize the part. Then you need to do Terraform plan. Uh, so that that's how it will show like what exactly it will show you like based on uh, once you enter Terraform plan uh, command, then it will show you like what exactly it will it's happening uh, with those. I mean, it before making any changes uh, to the infrastructure, it will show you okay. I'm going to add a couple of resources. I'm going to delete the your requirement uh, based on your code, it will show uh, what does it exact Terraform does. And Terraform apply is somewhere where you try to apply the all the current configuration. And uh, these two, like Terraform format and Terraform valid, are just to see. I mean, in Terraform format, you will try to format all the code. Like if you are missing something, it will try to add and make it format. And Terraform validate will validate the project actually. Right? But these two, uh, these two are just for code uh, formation. But first three Terraform, you need Terraform plan and Terraform apply. Uh, these three will help you to uh, make changes to infrastructure. And if you use Terraform delete, so it will automatically delete the infrastructure, whatever you're planning to. And if you come for bicep, so bicep, we try to uh, we try to create a uh, bicep uh, AZ bicep build. You need to create a bicep file before if you want to any decompile uh, any ARM templates to bicep. So there is a command called like AZ bicep decompile, and you can uh, decompile any of any of. I mean, it's easy to use rather than changing everything from the scratch. So whatever uh, things which they provision with ARM templates, you can you can make it to bicep and you can. Uh, start using them. Uh, so the the first thing uh, you you basically create is like AZ deployment group create. So where you create the resource group. Once you have uh, deployed uh, a AZ deployment uh, resource group, uh, then there is a command called like AZ deployment sub create. So where uh, in in the subscription, once you create a subscription, you can provide the main dot bicep file. So where my main dot bicep file has all lot of info. Let me give you like some basic example uh, before going there. Uh, let me give you like how code structure will be. Uh, then I can explain this be that way. Okay. So uh, I I have used. Uh, so in this terraform, like I tried to provision uh, Azure uh, Container Registry. Uh, this is for and exclusively uh, the, this this company. They need only Azure resource, so we don't have AWS. Uh, I just made uh, this thing to understand like how uh, terraform structure will be. So here, like I tried to provision Azure Container Registry, Azure Kubernetes Service, Key Vault, Resource Group, Storage, and VNet. So you can have all of this in like one single page too. But I just want to keep resources in a different uh, different way in each environment so that we can control more. Uh, so there is like uh, we can have one one file with all of these provisioned in one go. 
uh, or you can have like multiple photos. So here I tried to create, uh, we have like three elements, dev, prod, and user, like they have like three elements. So in module structure, in modules, uh, I had uh, my module called like main.tf. So where, so actually this is where resource uh, Azure RM content registry. So this is the where uh, you, with this resource, you can uh, create uh, Azure content registry. So this is the code snippet, you can find it online. Uh, you don't need to change anything. So you just need to provide these names, uh, container name, resource group, name, location group, uh, containers queue and a, a enabled or not. So uh, this resource, uh, whatever you are trying to mention, uh, you 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 will you will get this uh, everything online. So so you need to know uh, what variables you need to use. So variables will be part of here. So you will you whatever the variables you are placing here, what that country name. So you need to keep those over here and the resource group and location and continuous queue. And you can maintain the versions. So if you want to maintain version, you can maintain the version here or or else if you want to maintain version in, let's say in dev environment, you don't want to, you, you want to use like different version, you can mention those version here too. So you can, in the features, you can add the version here and in the ACR DF, uh, we go to the model ACR and in the source, I just go to model ACR and then from there, I can use this, all these variables so that, uh, in terraform.tf parts, like you actual, so in future, so once you set up everything, until now, unless you want to make any changes, uh, you don't need to worry about making any of the changes, any of those. So you just need to, let's say you want to create a new resource group, or you want to create a new container name, or you want to create like anything, you want to add any new feature, you just make changes here, and uh, you can make changes here. Uh, so you, you either make changes in module, let, let's say if you are planning to make any changes to module, you can change it here. Or so if you want to add anything or if you want to make it, let's say you want to provision, let's say here. Krishna, a, oh. Krishna, we can only see your PowerPoint. Are you sharing a different oh. screen? Oh. Sorry. Thank you. I mean, You're welcome. Oh, my bad. I, uh, can you guys see it now? Are still, yes, yeah, so I can see it now. Oh, okay, my bad. Sorry, okay. Uh, so let me go back one step back. Then. So, uh, here I'm trying to provision a ACR, AKS, or keyword resource group, uh, or use storage or winner. So, it doesn't matter what, what we are trying to do. So, the, the style structure should be uh, in modules. Like let's say you have uh, each company, I guess like they have like prod user and dev. If you have like multiple and more than more than once, you can have like multiple folders. But major thing is in Azure, in uh, uh, ACR models, you can have this is the major file. I mean, this is a major file where you can have a resource and the you can get all of this in course input in uh, uh, Hashicorp. If you go to Hashicorp and where you try to search for Azure and region, uh, under registry you will get entire resource over here. So what are you need to do is, you need to make them variables. Uh, you need to make them as variables. Uh, and then in variables, you need to declare, declare these variables, like container name or resource group name, location, container screen enabled. And if you want to provision any new uh, container registry, you just need to go here. Uh, so in the dev environment, you need to have acr.tf. So where you need to call uh, from the module file, like what are the variables I need to use? Uh, but only file you want to change is here. Uh, this is the actual file. Like if you want to make it previously, right now I provision with best US2. But if you want to provision a new Azure Content Registry with a different name uh, and in different environment, you can just change the name here. And once you apply Terraform apply and Terraform plan, uh, it will automatically create it. So similar way I did uh, if you go for prod. Uh, you, you refer everything you refer everything from modules module file and the thing, only change you make is uh, you change you're going to change in this terraform but you pause so what are the files you are going to change here so that will impact uh, that will create it so uh, for for time being i just created uh, one release so whenever someone make any changes the bill will automatically get deployed uh, triggered and it will automatically uh, let's go here. Let's say ACR, right? 
I created one release. Uh, these for just understanding. So if we go here, so build will automatically create. So I have like three builds. Uh, one is for dev, one is for prod, and one is for CA. So based on your changes you made in uh, different folders, so build will trigger. So once build is get triggered, uh, it will automatically get released. And from there, it will start deploying in, uh, it will go to dev. So here, uh, if you see, uh, I'm going to, I, I have used uh, Terraform, Terraform task in uh, ADO. So for that, like it will start, we don't need to do it from local. So everything is it from a cloud and you don't need to do make any changes in local. So it will be constant across all the, all, everyone. So first I will try to do init. I mean, uh, this is the first command we use and then we validate whether our uh, configuration is fine or not. Then we plan, uh, there's a command to plan. So and there's a plan to apply. So once you apply, it will automatically create the change. Yes, and if you want to destroy, this is the place we need to destroy it. So this is somewhat a little, uh, I mean, once you start using it, uh, you will get familiar with everything. I mean, uh, this is, uh, you you will start seeing the results very fast and it's easy to then, I mean, it's not, uh, it's hard to understand if you start using it. Uh, so similar way, if you want to create Kubernetes, like let's say Kubernetes in AKS. So I have, Main dot file where this resource like Kubernetes this so here uh, so resource uh, if you want to this all of this part you don't need to worry about like you will get everything on it you don't need to you just need to worry about uh, uh, how I need to make the variables how I need to make the variables and how I need to call the variables so whatever you are trying to call here you will need to place it in these variables and you just need to uh, you need to declare the variable first before making any changes here. And if you in dev environment, if you want to create any, uh, so in AKS.tf, like here you try to refer uh, the modules what you have beneath the one folder and just have these names. You, you, what, only file you need to make changes is here, uh, where you need to declare the variable names. So, I mean, it's uh, once you start using it, it will it's it will be super easy. Maybe I'll have like one more session on uh, how to try to take like by each and every step. Um, what is the first step and what is the next step? Maybe I'll I'll have like some session, and I will I will show you like how things works. Um, before that, I'll share one more thing. Yeah. So the. Uh, so coming to bicep so bicep is like similar to what i mean a terraform i did from end to end so that's the reason i have uh, everything in uh, folders polar way but i'm bicep i'm still working on it but uh, uh, the major thing in bicep is so even if you go here so main dot bicep file in main dot bicep file we try to instead of declaring variables in different folder in terraform here we try to declare in the before it starts i mean before something starts we try to declare parameters uh we try to declare parameters for the uh, prefix stream and we try to declare parameters for this location and if you want the objects uh we need specifics like whatever you want you try to create everything all the parameters first and then so once you have parameters like we i so there is a module called uh, nsg so you want to create like let's say module nsg so i have so I have created uh, energy by energy dot by set. Where here we here you need to so this part like water resource uh, energy. So you'll get this uh, directly from online or you can, you can by using this. I mean I have all of these uh, energies because I made uh, I mean that's our requirement. But uh, you you don't need to worry about all of this. I mean if you type energy resource energy, you will you'll automatically get this uh, resource and we try to make the changes over here. And if you go, I mean, let me go to bicep. Let me go to Vina bicep or something. Uh, so our our requirement right now, what I'm working on is they have provisioned everything manually. So they want to move whatever they created in uh, in manual uh, in, in portal. They want to move those code on templates to 
bicep core. So I'm trying to, I'm, I'm working on that part to migrate everything to bicep. But if you go to mind or bicep, right? so for each and everything, like we try to, instead of uh, Terraform, Terraform use like modules files and we switch it in different folders. Similarly, we try to maintain uh, modules in different structures, right? And we just provide the names here and uh, we just provide the names. So we need to use like model energy. So if you go to models and measure by six. So these are the values you need to provide for this energy dot bicep. So in order to uh, have the, all of uh, this more energy dot bicep to run, so we need to provide these variables. Uh, what you need name and you need uh, energy name. That's it. And we don't need to worry about like what behind the screen what happens. So a similar way in VNet. Uh, model VNet, you just go to VNet and you need to provide these names, location, virtual network name, security, tags, or something. Even for a keyword, uh, you, you just go to keyword uh, place, maybe I can go too deep, I guess. Uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, uh, I just want to show you guys like how code structure will be like different in Terraform and how code structure will be different in. Uh, Bicep, but if you start using it, uh, you will understand that like, both both have like similar uh, functionalities and both. Uh, so in one one go, you can uh, you can write all of this. Uh, you, you can create uh, uh, bicep. Uh, you can create like all the resources in one go. And the command to run this is like az deployment group create, and uh, you can have. Uh, the bicep, sorry, uh, a, a, a deployment sub create and you can have the bicep file and need to go to the location, it will automatically get created. Uh, so, I mean, uh, did you guys uh, let me stop sharing? Uh, something like that. Let me, yeah, do, do you have any questions on this? Or, uh, did you guys? Do you need more uh, uh, workshops to show like how things start from scratch or uh, like well, I can I can like if you want I can have like one more session and you go like one by one step. Our guys to create a small project and create and try to provision help you guys provision resources both in Terraform and by sector. Maybe that will that will I I can do that too. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Krishna? Well, great. It looks like we don't have any questions. Um, we appreciate everyone coming out tonight. Um, Krishna, we'll get together with Brett and see if you want to do another session yes. and go from there. Yeah. Um, if that's it, we'll just wait till the next meeting. Like Brett announced at the beginning, there will be no meeting in December. And we'll look forward to a meeting in January. Thank you, everyone, for coming.